All right, Shalom, Most High in Christ Blessed. This is Captain Ezra. And I'm Officer Amasai. And this is 15 Minutes with the Captains, and we're going to continue with the series called Fringe Check. And this one is going to be on the role of a wife. So the whole thing and the point in this, of this is to highlight the fringes. Because, yeah, a lot of us, we wear fringes. Or it should be all of us, but we wear our fringes, right? And... A lot of times it goes to the far back of our mind instead of being in the front of our mind. We don't think about them. We have them on, but are we really focused on what they represent? And are we using them to what they're used for, supposed to be used for, as a defense to keep us on the right track? So that way, throughout our day, we should be able to remember just by us having the fringes on what we should and should not be doing. But let's start where we always start, Numbers 15, 38. I was just watching a video of one of those uh, other camps, and they like trying to say that we're not supposed to wear fringes. Anyway, this is foolishness. But go ahead. I don't even know why. That just popped in my mind. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. So they didn't understand that far. It says throughout your generations. So as long as you're generating. New generations of Israel keeps coming. You continue to put fringes on. Come on. And that they put upon the fringe a border of ribbon of blue. Okay, come on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. Mm -hmm. That ye may remember... And do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So this is to help us to remember and to do all of the commandments of God. To remember and to do. And to do. Not just to remember. No, and to do. So and it's actually a commandment in itself. So that's one of the commandments is wearing fringes. So now let's go to Genesis 3.16. This is the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He shall rule over you, meaning, according to this definition, meaning to be the ruler of or to command. So that's the position that he has. So that means if his position is to command and rule over the woman, her position is to be submissive to his commands. And that she needs to make sure that she's in alignment with what he's putting forward. So this is her position. This is one of her roles in that marriage. So I want you to get First Timothy 2 and 11. Let's do that. This is the book of First Timothy. You know, chapter sisters hear these scriptures all the time. Right. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assert authority over the man. Come on. But to be in silence. Mm -hmm. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Right. So because of this, it's because Adam was first formed, and then Eve. Eve came from Adam. So she is put on earth to be in support of Adam. Adam was here first. The same thing with the women. That's why it says, let them be. Read that again. Read that one more time for me. Verse 11, on down. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Mm -hmm. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. That's the part. Not to usurp authority over the man. And sometimes in marriages, women will usurp authority over the man. They will put themselves in the position of being the head of the household. Or they'll put themselves in the position of, I run this. I, I tell you what to do. Or, or even just going back and forth with him is already, that's out of order according to the scriptures. You shouldn't be going, and that's not to say you should, can't have an opinion. If he's a good husband, he would want to listen to your opinion. He will ask you your opinion. And then, but the final decision is still his to make on whatever it is. But if he's a good husband, he would listen to his wife. He'll seek out her wisdom because he married. He shouldn't have married her just because a big button to smile. He should have been marrying her because she has a brain on her. She has understanding. She has wisdom. And guess what? 
I may not know the best in every situation. She may have some understanding that I don't have. So let me ask her and see what she has. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, let's readjust. And now we're going to go in this direction, but it's still his final decision to make. So that just means you need to be mindful about who you choose to be your husband. But this is the point. Read it one more time. Let the woman learn. No, if, from 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That silence part is a hard one. This is like the hell, silence. <laughs> For Adam was first formed, mm -hmm. then Eve. That's just showing you it's an order. It's an order to things. Adam came first, then Eve. That's the same order. The man come first, then the woman. Same thing like you read in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians. Let's get it. This is the order between husband and wife, man and woman, and children. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. You want verse 1 or verse 3? Uh, just get straight to the point. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So there's an order. It's an order in heaven. It's an order in, on earth between men, women, and children. There's an order. So drop down to verse 8, though. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. So the woman, she comes from the man. That's where you come from. That's what woman means, of man. So guess what? That means just like your children are of you, that's why you are in a position above them. The, the woman is of the man. That's why he's in a position above you. Now, again, that doesn't mean be a tyrant. That's not the going around in your house and you being a lion. That means you're not holding your position properly. If you're holding your position properly, just like what the scripture says, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. So that means your wife should be rejoicing when you rule because you rule righteously. So, you know, it goes both ways. But I want you to go to 1 Timothy 5 and 14. As you hear about people coming in and they knew they may come in married already. And that brother hear these scriptures for the first time and he lose his mind. He go home, woman, you supposed to do this and sit down, woman, and I want you to be. And it's like, wait a minute, brother, first thing first, get yourself together. And then by your example, she'll want to do better. You don't have to go and be a lion. Go ahead, though. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 14. I would therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So he wants the young women to get married so, and then also to have children. Because right now in the way the world is set up, a lot of young women, they, sometimes they don't even want to get married. They're like, no, I don't want to get married. Then the ones that do want to get married, they might say, I don't want to have children. I want to wait. I want to focus on me. I want to focus on my career. You know, I'm in a good place right now. I don't want to. I don't want to introduce that yet that's going to mess up my schedule i don't want to mess my body up you know whatever it may, no that's that's not what the scripture said the scripture said read it again i will therefore that the younger women marry bear children bear those children guide the house guide the house that is her job to guide that house meaning she's going to be in charge of educating those children she's in charge of making sure the house is in order sometimes she may need to be in charge of paying the bills because she may be better at it than him if he pay the bills and the bills don't get paid money jacked up but he got a playstation and a big stack of games and then they about to be put out or the electricity off and he can't play it now you're looking at her. No, if she better at it, let her pay those bills. Let her manage the money. Go ahead. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Why would the adversary have an occasion to speak reproachfully? One way is when he come to your house and he got to come in during a domestic dispute. Now he can speak reproachfully about you and your household. Why? Because it's a problem. It could have been an easily figured out problem just with the other scripture we read. We read do, not a usurp, do not usurp authority and be silent. <laughs> if you're not doing them things and you're still in that type of problem, that means that brother is just the devil. That means he, it's on him. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. But when you're not, 
you give the adversary a, a occasion to speak reproachfully. And that's not just bad on you. That's bad on the nation. So, you had something on that? No, I was just going to uh, add also when it says to bear children and the adversary speech reproachfully, that also goes into your children. Say, for example, if you're abusing your mm -hmm. uh, your your kids or um, or they're misbehaving at school or what have you. So that also goes into the adversary speaking reproachfully. Yeah, your kids in a the gang, they're they going to speak reproachfully about us. You know what I mean? Because that was her job to teach that child. Uh, that's the troubles of education, which falls on that woman. Now, let's go to Sirach 36 and 24. This is the book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. That is another duty of a wife. You're supposed to be a pillar of rest to your husband. When he's going out in the world and he has to deal with Esau and the nations beating him down all day, he don't need to come home to have round two with you. When he come home, he needs to get, that's just like you, you're a boxer. After you just got beat up, Tyson been knocking you upside your head. You got to go to the corner. What they doing? They wiping your head off, cleaning you up, fixing you up, and sending you right back out there. That's what that woman's supposed to do. When you come home after Esau beat your behind, she going to fix you up, clean you up, and get you ready to go out there again and get beat up again. And then come back and do it all over again. But that's the point. She's supposed to be a pillar of rest for you. Right? So let's drop down the verse. Keep going. Verse 25. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Go to chapter 26, and then let me get verse chap uh, verse 1. This is the book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25. 26 and 1. 26 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. A you got you a virtuous wife. It's like it doubles your lifespan. Well, like, like no gray hair? Like, I mean, your, it take a long that your hairline get don't recede as quickly. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything. You, you doubled your life if you got you a virtuous wife. And I wanted to start looking at brothers and looking at their hairlines and be like, yeah, I know something yeah, wrong something over there. Wrong at home. <laughs> but I ain't going to do that. But my point is, is that it, it can double your lifespan. Now, you look at them, some of them brothers that live old, like I look at my, my grandfather. My grandfather lived to like, what was he, like 90 something? But then I, let me look at my grandmother. Yeah, she was a virtuous woman. I mean, at least in a worldly sense, she was a virtuous woman. But yeah, I've seen something like this with my own eyes. Read it again. It says, Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife, mm. for the number of his days shall be double. Mm. Go ahead. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Man, you look up, you go to the grave in peace when you had that virtuous woman. Come on. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Uh-oh. So that was a problem for some of these people in the world. You fear the Lord, you get this. Why? Because you fear the Lord. You was applying the commandments. And even finding her, you applied the commandments. You didn't just look at her outward appearance and say, yeah, that's what I like. I'm into that. And then you get her home and she a demon. No, you said, you know, I'm going to take my time and see what this sister's about. Do she put in work in the body? Does she does she carry herself like a virtuous woman? Do I, can I see that? Is she modest? Is, does she uh, 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 mind her tongue? Not just when she uses it, but how she uses it. Not just with me, but with sisters around. It. What's her report? Amongst the sisters, what are they saying about her? Oh, okay, well, that's a good sister. You know what? I'm going to marry that one. That's when that applies. But drop down to verse 13. Verse 13. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her, discre and her discretion will fatten his bones. Mm. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. See that how uh, keep coming back to silent, though? Yeah. I'm telling that just keep on. I mean, they think, I mean, I didn't write the scriptures. You know what I mean? I can read them, but I didn't write them. And they keep coming back to that because they know, you know, the most I knew the end from the beginning. He's like, look, I know this woman. 
I know what she's going to end up doing. I know how she's going to become. Let me just keep putting it in there. Silent. 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 <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, let's read it one more time. Read a it silent and loving woman <laughs> is a gift of the Lord. That's and a gift. <laughs> That's like people, we, we in this uh, uh, Christmas, so-called Christmas season now. There's somebody that, that could, well, he wouldn't be going under no tree and getting a gift, but that's a gift. That's like somebody showed up and like, hey, you know, hey, I got something for you. What is it? Some silence from your wife. Oh, praises. He go to work happy. Like, man, I got some silence, and then I got some silence with it. And a little side of silence. Oh, man. Not that as soon as you open the door. <laughs> All right, come on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. That's on him. So that means she has to be willing to be taught. That mind's going to be well instructed from her father. And then after her father, it's going to go to that husband. But she has to be willing to be taught, not going back and forth with him. And listen, this means this, or this is the way we're applying these scriptures in my house. Whatever. He's the ultimate teacher of you. Not the captain, not the deacons or officers or bishop. He is your teacher. Come on. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Mm. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. That is a beautiful thing when a woman orders her house. She's the one that's come in. She got the decorations on the wall. I'm just using this as ordering. I mean, all of it is ordering. Ordering the house is making sure those kids are in order when he walk in the door. And they're not running around at toys all over the place. And the house is neat. The dinner is on the table, or is it, or it can be. It's already cooked. It's ready to go. Whatever your husband wants, that's what you should be doing. Now, you might have a husband that don't want none of that. He just want, you know, something, whatever, a sandwich when he get home. Well, all right, well, have a sandwich ready for him. Whatever he wants, that's what it should be because you're an extension of him. But that's her job to order that house, and that's another one of the roles that she has to fulfill. She has to make sure that house is in order. Because, again, he's not going to go out, what's the other scripture, go out fighting lions, doing this and going out to rob it, doing everything to get this money and come back. And then he got to come back and, and do this. Or he got to come back and he got to do the dishes. Why is he doing the dishes? He went and did this all day. No, 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 no. That's not the right way. But he said that. Read that last one again, 16. Verse 16. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife and the ordering of her house. And that's a beautiful thing. That thing is beautiful. So I want to end this with this. Go to Numbers chapter 30. Numbers chapter 30, and I want you to start in verse 3. So all of these are things that sisters need to apply to understand what her position is inside of a marriage. What she should be doing, and, and some things what she should not be doing. But this is what's going to make you successful. Read this. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 30, and verse 3. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. The point is that whatever we vow, we must keep. But in this instance, in this instance, if a sister is in her father's house, and she vowed a vow. That vow could be null and void by the father if he hear it. He can be like, wait, wait, wait. He can go, go in between her and the Lord and say, listen, Lord, do not listen to that. Don't honor that vow right there. And he won't. And they get wiped off the books. That's the power that father has over a daughter. But watch this. Read on. Verse 6. And if she had at all an husband when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips, Wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and he held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, 
Then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallow her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which he vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect. And the Lord shall forgive her. You see that? So the same position that her father had, once she became married, it transferred to the husband. Now he can disallow your prayer. He can disallow your vow. He can go between you and the Lord and say, no, don't listen to that, Lord. Ignore that. That's a powerful position. But that means that sister needs to understand that she is under him. She is going to be ruled by him. And that's the one of the main things that sisters need to understand. Make sure that you understand that, yeah, you're ruled by him. But you also have to understand that you have to pick somebody that's able to rule. You have to pick somebody that's set up to be a ruler, a good ruler. So we're going to leave it right there. With that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.